And after the performance, watched from the dust-filled upper gallery, back to his room on his bed, face up, fully dressed, staring at the ceiling, dreaming, wondering, writing. It wasn't only the beauty, but the strength of that music that overwhelmed the audience. Better yet, its brutality. Italy had need of such a force at that time. It was waiting for it. Italy, land of beauty, but also one of servitude, a servitude which was beginning to weigh. The people could no longer identify with the resigned, sorrowful plaint of Bellini. The ferments of rebellion needed a new champion, a new voice, and that voice was Verdi. Verdi later told of this episode in a letter, one of the few times he talked about Giuseppina and himself. And Giuseppina's role here is prophetic. She's already acting as Verdi's advisor and friend, as she was to be always. Friend, especially. It wasn't a sudden childish passion that blazed up between the two of them. It was far more than that. A great friendship developed into a great love. Rigoletto was born. Soyez maudits tous deux, qui que te soit valé à langue de vipère, qui fait riser ainsi de la douleur d'un père. Sois maudit. Sois maudit. The source was Victor Hugo's drama, Le Roi s'amuse. Be damned. The king takes his pleasure. As Piave was writing verses under Verdi's stern supervision, Verdi was also at work. For him, working didn't mean composing the opera immediately. He thought about it. He ruminated for a long time until... Be brief. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Until he had found what he called the musical hue, the color that he would give to the music. In fact, each opera of Verdi's is distinct, unmistakable. 